The PSP was such an amazing system. It was basically like having a PlayStation 2 in your pocket. You could play all these great games, some PSP exclusives as well. It had a UMD drive that could play not only video games, but movies too. What a great idea. So let's take all these great ideas and then make it all digital. How's that get you? Well, for me, personally, for the time, I was actually all for it. Yeah, I know, believe it or not, I happen to have a collection, but I embrace the digital idea, especially after I had children, because that way, like, all the games I have are all in one spot. I don't have to worry about, like, picking out another game, opening it up, you know, putting the game in there, putting the other one back where it goes. You know, just especially, like, you know, taking care of babies and changing diapers and feedings and all that. Um, all the games I have are all going to be in one spot for any particular system. So when they announced the PSP Go, I was very, very interested in this. Now, I bought one within the first week of the PSP Go, and I was a big fan of it, even though it was all digital. There's no disk drive, so you can't play your UMD movies. You can hook it up to your computer and put movies onto here, and you can also go in through the PlayStation Network and download games. You can purchase games that way. That's not bad. But it was an all-digital idea, and a lot of people did not like this idea. They did not like this direction that video games were going. Me, personally, I was for it, so I had one, and it was my travel system of choice all the way up until the Nintendo Switch came out. Well, it was preloaded with all these great games and all these compilation collections and all that. It was exactly what I needed. So just for fun, I was like thinking about it, now that we've kind of got past all that, it's been out for over 10 years now, I think more and more people are, you know, still, if a physical version of the game exists, get the physical, but, you know, I'm not going to shy away from the digital. There's some great digital games that never came out physical. So is collecting for the PSP Go in 2022 worth it? Well, in collecting for the PSP Go, all you need is a PSP Go. And, in full disclosure, from what I understand, you can hack these things to load up whatever you want. Now, I didn't do that to my personal PSP Go, but I thought in this video it would be fun to uh, grab one. It's new. It's still in the box. Everything's still in here. Have a little unboxing and see what it's all about. And I did pay for this, but I got a great deal on it, too, from my friends at Fair Game in Sacramento. I met them at the Sack Gamers Expo. They had a booth there. They were showing me this. It actually made a feature um, in my convention tour video. And I also did stop by the Fair Game store without them knowing about it. I did a quick little store tour uh, at their store um, near Sacramento as well. So check out both of those videos. They're both linked in the description. And thank you, Fair Game, for the great deal on this. I did pay for it, but I got a, I got a deal. I'm not going to idea. Now, I don't remember mine coming with Rock Band. Maybe it did, but it was a long time ago. But I don't, I don't remember ever playing Rock Band on this. So this might be like not the launch model, but it's it's going to be pretty cool. So I got the Rock Band Unplugged. Includes a PSN voucher for an exclusive PSP Go version of Rock Band. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can get that to work. Uh, with the PlayStation Network, it is the PSP Go. Uh, this is the 16 gig model. Um, they do have uh, memory cards that you can also uh, grab here. This tape has been peeled, so we can open it up to make sure that it was all in there and looked pretty good to me. This is the PSP uh, N1001. Now, the original PSP Go was like N1000, I believe, uh, but this is a Pearl White. Blanc Pearl, very cool. Let you know about their proprietary memory cards. Man, why, why, why would you do that? Don't do that. Just use use what's already out there. Nice compact box. It has a little bit of a weight to it. You wouldn't think it would, but it has a little bit of a weight to it. When we open it up, and here we go. This is the PSP. We'll look at this uh, in more detail naturally. But it still has that little plastic protective case around it. Nice. This is part of your charging cable. Kind of your standard issue, one of those things. You see those a lot in video games. And then here's here's the other portion of it there. Nicely done. And then that's going to be where your USB goes. Be under here. Looks like it is. Oh, oh yay, Patapon! I love Patapon! Oh, man, it still has a little bubble wrap around this stuff, too. So here's your USB. That's going to plug in here. Keep that safe and handy. So there's your USB. Nicely done. And then the other side, and this is interesting. The reason why it's separated like this for your charging, um, that's, the, that's the port that goes into your PSP itself. But it's also how you tether your computer to your PlayStation Portable. So yeah, you can use this as a charger, but then you're going to have to use this to uh, hook up to your computer so you can download um, so you can download games or down oh not download games rather um, but you can you know import movies import photos so here it is play the demo preloaded on your PSP Go man I loved me some Patapon too I wasn't very good at it but I loved the just the the fun charm of it all store voucher let's see if this even still works anymore has a code on the back there gigantic manual oh my goodness I'm not gonna be able to read all this nicely done your quick start guide which folds out like like a like a map, like a poster or something. And I remember I was always too afraid to type in my credit card information, so I just bought, you know, PlayStation Network cards that I could use. And this is called Media Go, and I bet this is a disc, which, yeah, it's a disc here, uh, which is good for uh, Windows XP or Windows Vista. Might be the thing that makes it so you can 
I don't I don't remember this being included either, but maybe I just was like, I don't care about that. I just, I'm, I'm getting this to play the games. That's what I need. No, I'm here for the video games, man. That's what it's all about. Right, I'm gonna keep the uh, rock band handy for a moment. Now, I have a feeling that this is not charged because it hasn't been plugged in. And again, what, how long ago did it come out? 12 years ago now, 12 and a half years ago. Sorry, I know. On one hand, it's like, I don't want to break the seal. But on the other hand, it's like, dude, I, I'm getting this to play. All right, you gotta be smarter than the plastic bag rigs. Come on. This thing just needs one of those, like the, the big red with the little tab thing that you just twirl around. Dude, there we go. All right, so there's one side. You know what, all you need is one side. The other side stays. It'll give me a chance to put this back together again. <laughs> Maybe, there we go. Okay, so, all right, we got it. And here is your PSP Go. And what I liked about it, it was sleek by design. Sleek in nature, little slide up there. Got your nice D-pad, your buttons. Little sunken, I wish the D-pad was a little bit more pronounced, but for the fact that it does that, that's why it's all flat. And then the analog, which worked pretty well, but you know, it's fine. Let's turn it on, let's see if it actually works here. Uh, gonna turn on the wireless, you actually had to say like, yes, please turn on the wireless. Now I think everything's just wireless automatically. And then there's your power button there. So, powering on, I didn't think so. Nope, so the power on, you just kind of do that and let go. And if you're like, you don't like, don't accidentally turn the power on, push it down, it'll kind of lock into place. Let's plug it in. A little light right there, that means that it is charging. And if I try to turn it on now, let's see what happens. Will it turn green? Was it too soon yet? No, I see something happening here. Ah, the volume controls are on top. There you go, right there. So that's you can turn up the volume, All right? It's it's telling me to open. Well, let's do what it says. Man, this is just a throwback. Just looking at this, we just had a, a wave of nostalgia for all the times I spent on this thing. Eastern, come on, PSP. I mean, Sony's in California. All right, here's Pacific time. That's me. Set time. Uh, well, it's not that time. What time is it now? It is still January. Oh my goodness. Look how far in the future we are. Yeah, I'll set the clock. Why not? Enter a nickname. P809. So if I hear sharing with others, like network gaming, it'll let you know which one, uh, you know, it'll let you know who you are, I guess. <laughs> well, oh, remember this? What it was like, this is how you text people. Like I said, just hitting, you know, like for L, you'd have to like hit the uh, five button, you know, a few times to get to the L. Oof. And here's your cross media, which I actually kind of liked. Uh, your your PlayStation 3 was set up this way as well. And I really enjoyed this. It's like you had your settings, your photos, your music, which I never used. I got 14 gigs to use. That's not bad. Videos, this is like where you'd put like your movies and all that. This is where you'd put your, um, you know, like if you have like movies to download, you'd put them there watch them later and here's where you'd put your video games down this thing as well as like you know managing your saves and all that internet browser you want to go online you want to browse some browse the world wide web go for it buddy internet radio remote play that's right there's you can you can hook this up and i remember you could uh, play this like almost like play your playstation 3 through this or something like that skype is included good lord and then here is your uh, your playstation network including the store and the information board let's see Let's see if I can sign in. Oh, I have to make a connection first. Okay, scan the networks. And that green light means that we're uh, we're connected here. All right, now I need a strong access point. And apparently my security thing isn't set because here's here's my uh, Wi-Fi right here. The land before time. That's right. Um, it's not connected. It's not uh, it's not supported through the security. But this one is. But that's not me. I don't know whose that is, nor do I have their password information, so I don't want to sign on to that one. Why wouldn't it accept it? Use wireless hotspot. I wonder if my phone would allow that. No, it's not gonna let me do anything because of that. In 2009, were we that lackadaisical about our Wi-Fi and internet access? Maybe we were. My stuff is locked down secured, but it's not that secure. It's just you sign in and here's the password and here you go. Automatic, see what happens. Oh, I don't have one of those. I wish I did though. I remember that was a thing for a while. The uh, the the Wii had that too, didn't it? Can I enter it manually? Well, I'm not gonna remove my Wi-Fi just to get this thing set up, but I will poke around a little bit more. Oh, which means my uh, 
which means my rock band, since I can't access the uh, shop, I can't access this game. I'll still keep it handy. Maybe I'll have to bring this to like a, like a Starbucks or something. There are no images. You can import content from a PS3 system or a PC. That's right, you can actually plug this directly into your PS3. There are no videos. And there's your USB connection. Well, let's plug it into the computer and see if we can put something on here. And it's automatically, now usually I would have to go in and actually access, you know, USB mode. But this thing just popped up immediately. And I have folders on my side for uh, music, picture, PSP. And it's not as easy as just putting PSP games onto here. Wouldn't that be special if it was? There. I added a couple of things on here. We'll see if it works. I put a game on here too. I doubt it works that way. But just so you can see, like I slid it over. We'll see what happens. So here's, I put a couple of photos in here, not many. So here we go, we got cereal. We got uh, my face. And then here's a screenshot for uh, Yeah Yeah Bebus 2, my uh, NES homebrew. So when you click on it, uh, hey, there you go. So this is a this is a ping file, and you know looks looks pretty clear here. That's just this is uh, part of the uh, serial book that I have there. I can put that on a shirt or something like that. Good looking uh, avatar there of my uh, NES homebrew here, and then it gives you a little bit. It's hard to tell. Oh, I'm, oh, I can, I can set this up as the wallpaper. You want to set it as the wallpaper? Yeah, why not? Sweet. Now I can't see anything. So now I got that as my wallpaper. It makes it hard to see everything else, but. You can change that later as well. And then videos. Now I put a video in here. We'll see if it runs. We'll see if it works. It is a video, it's an unsupported data. Okay, so the video I put on here was a straight rip from a uh, from an Oculus Quest video. And I remember I ran into this a lot. Like it has to be a certain video file type for it to work. But this being the case, it's not that. All right, let's see if the game worked. I doubt it will. And I don't think there's gonna be a game on here. Um, it does have the... <laughs> Nice. And then there's a uh, video game ratings guide that'll uh, walk you through that. But it does have that. It's... If I land on that, I have to hear the whole thing every time. This is the, the demo. I had the full version of the game too on my other system. And then the corrupt data, this is the one that I tried to slide over. I just slid it over. Again, you can hack this thing to load up whatever games you want. I haven't done that. Um, I haven't done that with my old one, but I'll probably do it with this one because, hold on. Let's do it. Oh, that sound. Oh, I love it. One of my favorite sounds. It's not, not to me, not quite as nostalgic as like the Dreamcast sound, but it's a very, very cool sound. So at least we have the demo to walk us through it for now. Oh my God. So many memories. It's been a long time since I've seen this. It's a rhythmic game. <laughs> That's just so fun. All right, all right, all right. And when you're done, you can hit that button, you can pause, you can quit the game. I'll go ahead and quit the game here. Right back into your main screen here. When in doubt, you can just close it up like this, keep it going. There you go. You know, it'll give you a little clock, or at least mine, mine had a clock on there. There it is. Yeah, that, that's that's what time it is here anyway. You want to play again? No problem. Right back into the action. That was always so cool. I love it. Even though I couldn't get the Wi-Fi to work on this uh, because my Wi-Fi connection is on lockdown, but I'll, I'll have to take this to a place like a Starbucks or a McDonald's that has a free Wi-Fi that maybe doesn't use the same kind of encryption, whatever the thing is, just to get this working again, because I would love to get this back on the internet. Um, I'm not sure if the store even works anymore, but again, like I said, I mean, this thing's been out long enough. There are ways to play whatever game you're thinking about on something like this. So very cool to revisit. Thank you for watching and more videos are always coming up. We'll see you soon.